Hi everyone, in this video I am going to explain about emitter coupled stable multivibrator. In the beginning of a stable multivibrator, I told you there are two different types of configurations available in a stable multivibrator. One is collector coupled stable multivibrator and second one is emitter coupled stable multivibrator. Uh, we have seen the designing concepts and uh, operation of a stable multivibrator with the collector co coupled configuration. So, in this video, emitter coupled configuration is going to be explained. So, in the emitter coupled configuration, so emitters of Q1 and Q2, we know there are two transistors always for the multi vibrators because there are two states, two states in bistable both are stable states in monostable one stable and one quasi stable but in a stable both are quasi stable states so a, a state means particular state of the transistor okay if the transistor is on it will be having a low voltage low collector voltage if it is off high collector voltage depending upon that we will be having two states so always we will be using two transistors in a multi vibrator construction so emitters of Q1 and Q2 are coupled coupled through a capacitor through a capacitor. This configuration and construction of the circuit is somewhat different which was not seen earlier. Okay, uh, we have to use a capacitor in between emitters of their transistors Q1 and Q2 as well as we have to use resistors two different resistors to ground the particular emitter to uh, emitter to be grounded through that however i will show you the test circuit diagram so along with that two resistors re1 and re2 are used from emitter to ground two resistors re1 and re2 are used from emitter to ground what is the purpose of a resistors at, from, at the collector for providing biasing value for biasing voltage these resistors are used so biasing purpose nothing but whenever a resistance is there if current flows since a drop is occurred that drop will provide some voltage across the emitter terminal that will be acting like a, a biasing supply now see this is the circuit diagram actually there are three supply voltages are required or you can even use a single supply for making this if you combine all these together and given a single supply that is also fine otherwise you can use separately three different voltages vcc1 vcc2 and vbe at the input of first transistor see the emitters of these two are coupled through a capacitor so this is the emitter one this is emitter two and this is base one collector one base 2 and this is collector 2 so the input q1 first transistor input is connected to a biasing supply vbe this vbe is the voltage which is enough or sufficient to make the transistor q1 on okay so when it is in on state what is the voltage appeared at the collector of q1 what happens it is a very short voltage very less voltage is there whenever less voltage is applied to the base of the q2 q2 does not come into on state so it becomes off okay again the same configuration is appearing here push pull configuration if one transistor is in on state definitely the other is in off state that is always the case now from base to ground there will be actually three different voltages if you take vbr1 VBR1 that is the combination of voltage from base to emitter plus 
emitter resistance voltage vr1 vr1 r is nothing but here it is grounded ground potential okay for our example we can also consider it as a ground okay ground in our calculations i will use the term n i will use the term n means ground okay so now see calculations before that change of calculation of calculation of different values at uh, calculation of different values at t is equal to t 1 minus what is the meaning of this one is we are performing the values before the change of state just before the change of state since q1 is on and q2 is off q1 is on and q2 is off just before the transition just before the transition at t is equal to t1 minus we have see here now i am going to write each and every voltage values at different values at different uh, dimensions like uh, vc1 2 what is the vc1 2 vc and 2 collector voltage from collector to ground vc and 2 of t1 minus is equal to of t1 minus that is equal to vcc2 and ven1 of t1 minus t1 minus is equal to i told you already see here emitter to there is not, uh, that is nothing but ven1 is nothing but emitter to ground from here to here whatever i have shown here vr1 which is nothing but vn1 just replace r with n okay here it is replace r with n so vr1 is equal to what is the overall voltage in that path vbb base voltage vbb that vbb minus this vb sat vb sat so vbb minus vb is sat nothing but v gamma so it is vbb minus vb sat that is equal to vbb minus v gamma and similarly vcn1 of t1 minus is equal to vbn2 is equal to c vc1 vcn from collector to first transistor collector to ground is is, is nothing but vbn first second transistor is base to ground because these two are directly connected together even if you talk about collector one or base two both are at the same point so both are equal so how can you write this one vn 1 plus vc sat so that is equal to ven 1 plus vc sat that is equal to vbb minus v gamma plus vc sat <coughs> okay so during this interval preceding t is equal to t1 the capacitor c charges so during the interval preceding t 
T is equal to T1 is equal to T1 the capacitor C charges from a fixed voltage charges from a fixed voltage VBB minus V gamma through the resistor RE2 through the resistor RE2 so all circuit voltages remain constant except VE2 which falls asymptotically towards 0 ok so VE2 what happens it goes to 0 because of this change so the, so the transistor Q2 will begin to conduct when VE2 or VEN2 falls to so Q2 starts conducting when VEN2 of T1 minus is equal to VBN2 minus V gamma plus VC sat minus V gamma. Okay, so this is regarding the calculation at T is equal to T1 minus. If you do the same analysis at T is equal to T plus calculations at T is equal to T1 plus nothing but after the change of the transition nothing but Q1 comes into on state uh, off state and Q2 comes into on state. So when Q2 conducts VEN2 VEN1 will raise ok so as VEN1 raises what happens Q1 comes out of saturation and VCN conducts so everything every voltage will vary and the position of the transistors will be altered so VCN2 plus T minus T plus T1 plus is equal to VCC2 minus IC2 RC2 VCN1 T1 plus is equal to VBN1 of T1 plus is equal to VCC1 minus IB2 RC1 and similarly VEN2 plus T1 plus is equal to VBN2 of T1 plus minus VBE2 of T1 plus that is equal to VCC1 minus IB2 RC1 minus VBE2 ok so here T1 what happens there is an abrupt change VD in VE2 so at T1 there is an abrupt abrupt change VD in VEN2 so because of the capacitive coupling between emitters there must be also be the same discontinuity VD in VE1 hence VD is equal to what is VE1 VE1 plus T1 plus minus VEN1 T1 minus the difference between the either voltages of the capacitor what is VD VD is nothing but difference voltage from emitter 1 and emitter 2 VD is nothing but difference voltage between emitter 1 and emitter 2 so it is nothing but VEN1 
t1 plus minus vn1 t1 minus that means the change from ve uh, emitter to ground potential before and after the application of the state changes that is equal to ven2 the same can also be written as ven2 t1 plus minus ven2 t1 minus therefore that is ven of t1 plus is equal to vcc1 minus ib2 rc1 minus vbe2 minus vce sat plus v gamma that is we are taking it as something like v1 so neglecting the junction voltages neglecting the junction voltages and ib2 rc1 compared with vcc1 so ven1 of t1 plus is equal to ven2 of t1 plus is equal to vcc1 so whatever the voltage you are applying as a one of the supply voltages the same will be appeared across the resistors re1 and re2 even after the application of the state changes okay so in the emitter coupled stable multi vibrator the emitter to ground voltage across the resistors re1 and re2 is same like vcc1 vcc1 that is because of the existence of capacitance between these two okay that is the reason why we are having the vcc1 has influence at the emitter to ground potential okay so in the next video i will explain about the period of emitter coupled stable multi vibrator how to calculate that particular period thank you